Welcome back to Dell's DIY. We are gonna jump right into the build video, but first I wanna thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to watch my video. I know there are tons of great channels out there which are all competing for your time and I truly appreciate your support. Jumping right into the project now, I was in desperate need of a router table, but I'm not ready to make my permanent solution yet, which is going to be a router table cart for my full-size Triton router. I came up with a portable router table, which uses a trim router, which can be taken down and set up within seconds. In addition to its portability, I love that I can take the router out of the table, use it anywhere without having to unscrew it from a base plate, reattach it to another base plate. It just is so nice. And finally, the dust collection. The dust collection on this table is incredible. Wait till you see it. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the build video. We're gonna start by breaking down some plywood using my Bora Centipede. I'm gonna be using my track saw and I use these insulated sheets to prevent me from cutting right into the work surface. And the centipede keeps me from working on the floor, which is nice. I'm making some guidelines to line the track up with, but I'll clean up the final cut on the table saw. The track saw is a new addition to my workshop, and gosh, I wish I got it sooner. I just love it, use it all the time. I line the track up with the guidelines and run this saw down the rail, leaving me with a perfectly straight cut, and I don't have to wrestle a huge sheet of plywood on the table saw. I then put a nice clean cut on a factory edge, which I'll be running against the table saw for my first cut. Putting the freshly cut edge from the track saw against the fence, I run the sheet through the table saw, giving me the final dimension. Now this one sheet of plywood in my hands is going to be all the wood that you need to create this project. I'm cutting what will end up being the top of the router table, and then simply just keep moving the fence in, cutting out all of the rest of the pieces. When we're done, we're gonna have a router top, four sides, a middle support, a bottom piece that will end up being clamped to your work table, and all of the parts for the fence. We are going to be using pocket holes for a lot of the assembly. I have a Craig Foreman, which I'm going to use, but any pocket hole tool will work just like a K4 jig in this custom workstation. I'll put three pocket holes in each of the four side pieces, which get fastened to the bottom of the router tabletop. Whenever I get to use my Foreman, it is a happy day. I absolutely love this tool. It is so fun to use. I like to clamp down a scrap piece of plywood, which helps give a little extra support, keeping the side from moving around as I screw in the pocket hole screws. After applying some wood glue, I line it up and screw it in. I wanna note one thing about the width of these side pieces because you need to make sure they are wide enough to fit the top of your clamp underneath the table when you're clamping your router table to a work surface. I label the two sides that'll go in between the other two sides because I'm gonna be measuring these in place. And just in case one of them is just a little bit different, I don't wanna mix them up. And now I have two perfectly cut pieces that fit absolutely. Oh, come on now, play nice. I use a brad nailer to hold the pieces in place and then follow up by screwing them in with pocket hole screws. You can see when I squeeze it, it's completely not bonded together. Look at all the voids. All right, next up, we're going to be installing the bottom piece of the table. <clears throat> this is the piece that 
uh, will actually be clamped to the table. So I want to make sure I put extra uh, screws and glue and brad nails on this because it is going to be holding a lot of the weight on the front of the table when you're using it. So I'm going to be countersinking some screws. I'm going to be using this Amana uh, countersink bit. If you don't have one of these, I highly, highly recommend it. I'll link to it below and in, in the plans. This is probably the best countersink bit you can buy, and they are extremely popular. You need one in your shop. One of the great things about this bit is that you can set the depth of how deep you want the screw to be countersunk. And once you hit that depth, the gold plate on that countersink bit will uh, go against the surface and stop the bit from going any deeper. Now we have to put in the middle support. And what this is gonna do is give a little more um, support, hence the name, to the back. It's also gonna give a reference edge that's gonna sit up against your workbench. Now you don't have to measure this exactly in the center. All we need to do is make sure you have enough room on the sides for your clamps. I really don't know if glue is necessary, but I tend to use it pretty much in every woodworking project, so I figured, why stop using it here? I add brad nails once again to keep it in place, and follow up with some pocket hole screws. Now you can see how nicely it references the edge of your workbench and also what I meant by the thickness of the sides, you need to make sure you have enough room for your clamps. This design works surprisingly well. It is really sturdy and tight to the workbench. Next we jump right into measuring the layout for the placement of the T-Tracks. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know I love these pocket rules and I will put a link in the description below. I use these on every project and they are a fraction of the cost from other popular brands. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is where you're placing the T-Track and making sure that you're not gonna be putting the track above a pocket hole screw or else you're gonna be running into it with your bit and you'd be buying yourself a new straight bit after that accident. I like to visually see the entire layout it helps me visualize what the final product will look like. To make the dado, I'm gonna be using a router with a straight bit. Now you can use a trim router like this one, or you can bring out the big dogs like this one. Both of them will handle the job just fine. I'm using a three quarter inch straight bit, which is the exact width of my T-Track. And I wanna set the depth of the dado to just a hair deeper than the T-Track itself. I ended up making the full cut in one pass and had no issues with tear out, which is a little surprising considering the plywood I was working with. But the key is just to take it slow, take your time, make sure you keep that edge along the side of the router table so you get a nice straight line and everything works out perfect. You're gonna be left with some round edges on the back side, but we're gonna clean those up in a later step with a chisel. I already know people are gonna say, how come you're not using dust collection or how come you're not wearing a mask? But in all reality, it's really not that much dust and it's not like it's fine dust. I oh, never mind. 
truth be told, I didn't have the right adapter size to fit the router. So I'll get that squared away for next time. And I did have a mask on for that second pass after seeing the mess from the first one. Now is a good time to go back with some chisels and just clean out those rounded corners. Do you want one of these in your shop? Well, you're in luck. Full build plans are available and they're linked in the description below. And I can promise you, they don't completely suck. So go check them out. And back to your regular program already in progress. That is a terrible radio voice. I place the T-Track all the way in the slot and make a mark measuring the length. Cutting aluminum actually is pretty easy. You can use all of your current woodworking tools to do so. Just take your time and go slow. One note is if you are using a saw stop, you want to make sure you turn off the blade brake as aluminum will trigger the brake. I add a little bit of CA glue just to give a little extra holding power to these little screws that'll be going into what is remaining on the plywood top. I've also seen people use epoxy and some people don't use anything and seems to work fine. Like I said, this is just my preference. This is where we finally get to have some real fun here. The base plate is going to be inset into the top of the table. And in order to get a perfect tight fit, I create a template out of half inch MDF, which I'll then use a flush trim template bit to make the final cut into the tabletop. I like to use MDF as my templates because MDF is much easier to sand and shape compared to plywood or other hardwoods. Here I'm finding the center of the template and adding vertical and horizontal alignment lines, which we'll be using later. I'm using a Veritas uh, compact router plate. I'll put a link to the base plate in the description below. Um, what I like about this plate is a full circle plate would spin. This has a nice flat edge. And it also, it's a really nice plate. You can pull your router right out of uh, the table and you can start doing some other work you know, with the straight edge, it's really nice. Uh, you could also use a square router plate. That's fine too, anything but a circle. So I have it installed in the router that is gonna be going into the router table. And I put a really small straight bit on, and that's just gonna help me find the center. This does not have to be absolutely dead on perfect, but you just want it to be close enough. All right, that's close enough for me. Now, all I'm going to do is trace the outline of the plate. This is what we're going to cut out in the next step. I drill a few holes that I'll use for my jigsaw and then carefully start cutting just a hair inside of the base plate outline. I'm going to use a spindle sander to inch up to the line, but you can use a wood file or even sandpaper taped around a dowel. I carefully work my way around and I'm testing the fit with the base plate as I go just to make sure I don't take off too much. I gotta say, sometimes I even impress myself. That is a tight fit. 
All right, so this is the part that most people are probably the most intimidated about. That's cutting through the top of the table for your insert. We're gonna be creating a ledge around here, the inset, where your base plate's gonna be sitting. This is probably the most intimidating part of the project because once you uh, make a through cut, there's no turning back. And so you have to make sure your measurements are super precise because remember, we have a middle support right here. And so you want to make sure you're not putting the base plate over that middle support. So when you make your cut, you don't have anywhere to go with your router because your router is going to be dropping down into, into the table. It's not coming up, being screwed in. So you need to make sure you have a base plate that is a big enough. Um, for the router to go down through the hole and you want to make sure you're taking into account the location of that middle support. I promise you know this this all was going to start making some more sense. We put these alignment lines on the template and there was a reason for that because finding the center of this is impossible right and so what we're going to do is make alignment lines on this on the actual table for where you want the center of your template to be. Make sense? Now we gotta do it. Once I decide where I want the center of the base plate to be, I make alignment lines horizontally and vertically and an intersection point where the center should be. We're going to use the alignment lines to line up with the template's alignment lines. This way you don't need to guess where the center of a hole in the template is. Once everything is lined up, I trace around the inside of the MDF template. We're going to use this to measure and mark out the ledge which the base plate is going to sit on. I want a 3 8 inch lip all the way around the perimeter of the template. Using a ruler and a woodworker's compass, I measure out 3 8 of an inch from the outside, lock that measurement in, and then draw a circle up until I get close to the top flat edge. For the flat side, I just use a ruler and measure in 3 eighths of an inch, and then I'll connect the dots. I'm shading the inside just so I don't make a mistake and accidentally cut around the outside. Oh my gosh, did that really just happen? After this incident, I was a little fed up, so I called the plywood manufacturer and they were able to trace my lot of plywood to a defective batch from the factory and they ended up reimbursing me for the wood. And actually something really good might come out of this. I'll keep you guys posted in future videos. After crying that my plywood exploded, I cut out the shaded area. This is a small white side template bit, which I will link in the description below. I'm using some woodworkers double sided tape, which works extremely well for holding down templates. And it also comes off nice and easy without leaving any residue on the surface.
using the alignment lines once again and ensuring that I have the same reveal around the inside of the template, I stick the template down to the router tabletop. The best way to set up the router with the perfect depth of your base plate is to use a piece of your MDF stacked with your base plate and a piece of your double stick tape. Then use a straight edge and make sure you're not too deep or too shallow. All that's left is to slowly work your way around the inside of the template and router out the inside lip. With a good template like we made, there really is a minimal chance of messing this up. And there it is in all of its glory, a perfectly inset router base plate. I run a straight edge around the outside just to make sure I don't have any high points. We are almost done, now we just have to work on making a fence. This is a really simple fence with simple dust collection that works really, really well. Overall, I think it's all I need for a portable router table. Using my handy pocket rules, I measure out the location of the dust cutouts. On the bottom of the fence base, I went ahead and did a rough layout of where all of the supports were gonna be located, just so I knew where I could put the pocket holes. I started to cut out the dust collection openings on the bandsaw, but realized my teeny tiny bandsaw did not have enough clearance to make that final cut. So I finished it up with the jigsaw. The fence supports are simply triangles. Cutting them seemed to be a little sketchy, so I made a little jig and a really high-end, expensive, push-down stick thingy to hold the pieces in place. And since all projects start with glue and pocket holes, well, that's where the fence started as well. Geez, it really looks like I'm putting some strength into those pocket screws. I'm using my 23 gauge pin nailer just to help hold the supports in place while the glue dries. There's two options for dust collection, both of which are covered in the plans. The first option is a dust collection box completely made out of plywood. This option is a simple box with a hole cut out of the top where you can put a dust collector hose. Option two is the option that I went with, and this utilizes a small dust collection hood, which is about six inches wide and has a two and a half inch dust port. Using two additional fence supports, I butt them up against the dust collection hood, creating an air box. Two pieces of plywood will hold down the dust collection port.
The fence is going to be held in place just by using standard T-Track bolts and knobs. Installation is pretty straightforward. We're just going to align the fence to the table and then make some marks in the center of the T-Track on the base of the fence and then drill the holes where those marks were made. I recommend using slightly bigger drill bit than your bolt itself just to make it easier to push the bolts through and it'll make your fence slide back and forth a lot smoother as well. You can see I struggled a little bit getting the bolts through the holes I just drilled because I used a quarter inch drill bit on a quarter inch bolt, but I did go back and make them just a touch bigger and it works much, much better. I added a bead of silicone all the way around the dust port just to create a nice airtight fit, which hopefully will help with the dust collection. I did a quick sand with 320 sandpaper just to get it nice and smooth without ripping off any more of this really crappy veneered plywood. And to top it off, I put a very slight chamfer around the edges just to soften it up a little bit. And that's a wrap, we are done. I really love the small footprint and the fact that I can put it on and take it off and store it away when I'm not using it. I love that the clamps are completely underneath the table which leaves me the entire work surface on top to work on my project without any interference. And I have to say, the dust collection is just fantastic. And this is just with a shop vac. Thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe because I have a ton of new content coming. I promise. If you want to build this for yourself, links to the plans are available in the description for both my website and my Etsy store. I'll see you on the next project and take care.